Hi, I'm Tyler Casey. And I'm Lauren Lefebvre. Welcome back to Johnny Benny Campus News. We'll start off today's episode by going straight to Austin Salmon to catch up with our sports on campus. Thanks, Lauren. Most recently in CSB SJU Athletics, the Blazer tennis team is off to a hot 2-1 start while the Johnnies are looking to regain momentum from coming off two team losses this past week and leaving them 0-2. In regards to basketball, Augsburg defeated our Johnnies 82-76 and our Blazers 64-55. Both teams are in hopes of winning their next game against Gustavus. For our hockey teams, the Blazers have had a rough outing this year, but are looking to piggyback off their win against St. Catharines into facing St. Mary's, whereas the Johnnies are trying to maintain their record of above 500 on the season while taking a W over St. Mary's as well. For both swim teams, CSB SJU was represented greatly this past weekend. Both teams are looking forward to competing in the Mayak Championships, and the Johnnies will start about a month later than the Bennies, but we'll be cheering them on. For Johnny Baseball and Blazer Softball, each team's season will begin on February 26th, and each will be competing against the respected teams, University of Wisconsin Lacrosse. Each game will be held off campus at a neutral field. Wrestling had their last home meet this previous Friday, as well as both track and field teams that held an event here in Collegeville. This was Austin Salmon reporting for Johnny Benny Campus News. Back to you, Tyler and Lauren. Thanks, Austin. And now we go to headline news with Ellen Munchauer. Hi, I'm Ellen Munchauer, and welcome back to JBCN's segment called Headline News, bringing you the top news stories from this week to help you stay up to date during your busy school week. First, scientists may have found the tools to stop cholera, which rose from the swamps of Bangladesh two centuries ago, killing tens of millions of people over the years. A research center in the capital of Bangladesh has developed treatments that save 99.9% .9 of all victims. The vaccine is now used in Haiti and has been deployed in outbreaks in Iraq, South Sudan, and elsewhere. It will help end one of the world's worst diseases with 1.4 billion people at risk. Second, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers will grant an easement in North Dakota for the controversial Dakota Access Pipeline allowing the project to move towards completion despite the protests of Native Americans and environmentalists. Just a few weeks ago, President Donald Trump signed executive actions to advance approval of this pipeline and others, casting aside efforts by President Barack Obama's administration to block construction. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, which has long opposed the project near its home, promised a legal fight and is concerned that the pipeline will affect drinking water and parts of their reservation. Pipeline supporters argue that many jobs will be created and other economic benefits will come from the pipeline being built. And last, efforts to save lives on Minnesota roads could soon be taking a different turn. A bill that will be introduced to state lawmakers this week would require drivers to use hands-free devices if it becomes law. So if this becomes law and law enforcement catches someone violating it, they would be subject to a $50 fine. If they're caught a second time, they'd have to shell out $250. Therefore, one would be handed the same fine as if you were caught texting and driving. If this bill passes, you still wouldn't be able to text and drive, and you couldn't talk with people on the phone unless you're using a hands-free device. State lawmakers who are not on board yet and other opponents of a hands-free phone law say it could be too much legislation. Join us next week for Headline News to keep you up to date with your top news stories. This was Ellen Munchau reporting for Johnny Benny Campus News. Back on campus this week, CSB Sustainability will be having competitions all week between each residence hall on the CSB campus. The competition will determine which residence hall can reduce their water and energy consumption the most. Students can follow their residence hall's progress in Goretzky and or check in with their RAs. The winning residence hall will win a pizza party. Best of luck to all CSB students. If you're looking for something fun to do this weekend, this Saturday, February 18th, Fine Arts Programming will be welcoming voice play to campus. Voice play is described as original, imaginative, and ridiculous. Members of voice play have created a unique style of acapella that is peppered with loads of humor. As always, student tickets are $10, and the performance is at 7.30 p.m. in Escher Auditorium. Do you want to get your groove on like you're in middle school again? Do you want to relive the days when your whole world was awkward? Well, now is your chance. JEC will be hosting the Oops, We Did It Again Middle School Dance. Come to Brother Willie's Pub from 9 to 11 p.m. to relive the music from your awkward stage. Hollister and Aeropostale attire is recommended. We head over now to Maddie Morris to catch up on this week's politics. Thanks, Lauren and Tyler. 
Although I would certainly love to cover everything that is happening in politics th this week, let's focus in on some of the top stories. First, Democrats in the Senate held the floor for 24 hours in an attempt to halt a vote on Betsy DeVos for Secretary of the Department of Education, and then again for the nomination of Jeff Sessions as Attorney General. In a historic act, Mike Pence became the first vice president to use his power to break a tie in the Senate, ultimately leading to a majority vote for the confirmation of Betsy DeVos. Second, President Trump announced that Neil Gorsuch is his pick to fill the vacancy on the Supreme Court. The president said this choice was easy for him, as he knows that Gorsuch will be someone that respects our laws, is representative of our Constitution, and loves our Constitution. Some congressional leaders, such as Senator Ted Cruz, are hailing this choice as a home run, while opponents, such as Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, are threatening to filibuster the nominee. And last, the political turmoil continues for President Trump's executive order on immigration and refugees. On Thursday, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit ruled to continue the freeze on this order. In a 29-page opinion, three judges rejected the argument that the suspension of the order should be lifted immediately for national security reasons. President Trump responded to the decision on Twitter by saying, See you in court. The security of our nation is at stake. Check in with us next week for your politics update. This is Maddie Morris reporting for Johnny Benny Campus News. Back to you, Lauren and Tyler. Thanks, Maddie. Now we go to Zach Eichten with coverage of last Tuesday's demonstrations. Hi, I'm Zach Eichten here with Johnny Benny Campus News, uh, reporting at the demonstration at Sexton Bus Stop. I'm here with Sid Robinson, who is one of the organizers of the demonstration. From what I hear, there's a lot of uh, chanting. Uh, sort of, what's the what's the atmosphere like so far? Thankfully, it's been very, very positive. People are willing to speak up. They're talking whether they have opposing views or not. We have conservatives speaking, liberals speaking, people who are for the wall, against the wall. It's just trying to come together and generally understand, you know what actually is happening on campus and how we need to move forward from here. Um, in your view, what is the uh, outcome that you want to happen from the demonstration? Well, we do have a lot of demands that we did send to the president, such as increased funding for the Intercultural International Service students, Student Services, because we believe that that is something that is just as worthy as the history department, the music department. We want the human policy as well as the harassment policy to be vetted and in a more understanding language for students to understand, because the Johnny and Benny book is kind of hard to read if you're not in legal guardian, but we really just want to open the dialogue and actually create a safe space where people are comfortable coming because a lot of times when we do safe spaces the same six or seven people are coming saying the same views and we want genuine diversity genuine opinions just a variety of everything well from what I've seen so far there's been a lot of uh, dialogue being open today so thank you, uh, thank you so for Johnny Betty Campus News I'm Zach Eichten thanks Zach are you interested in being a part of our team do you have suggestions of things you'd like to see on our news JBCN wants to hear from you. Email jbmedia at csbsju.edu for more information about joining our team or suggesting what you would like to see on our campus news. That's a wrap for this week's episode. I'm Lauren Lefebvre. And I'm Tyler Casey, reporting for Johnny Benny Campus News. Enjoy the rest of your week and make sure to tune in next time.